Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to take our resource gatherer AI and keep track of resource amounts. Let's get started. So here's the resource gatherer from the previous video. He starts off idle, goes to a resource node, mines that node, and takes it to storage. Right now the resources don't really exist, it's just a number going up, being reset and lost forever. Let's make a class to handle those resource amounts. So make a new c -sharp script and name it Game Resources. This class is going to be responsible for holding all of the player resources, essentially a resource bank. This is what we're later going to use to check if we have enough resources to construct a building. Inside this is going to be a very simple class, so let's get rid of all of this. It will also be static since we only have one resource bank in our game. And to start with, let's make a private static int for our gold amount. Let's make some functions to add gold. So public static void add gold amount. And we're going to receive an int for the amount. And inside we're simply going to increase our internal gold amount by that amount. And let's make a public static int function to get our gold amount. And inside we are simply going to return our gold amount. Now let's go up here and make an event to fire when the resource amount changes. So a public static event, event handler, called on gold amount change. Event handler is part of the system namespace. So in here, when we change our gold amount, if we have subscribers, let's notify them, send them null and event args dot empty. All right, this class is now set up. We can add a resource amount, get the current amount, and it fires an event whenever that amount changes. The class is static, so it can be used from anywhere in our game. Now all we need to do is have our gatherer AI call the add function in this class to add the resources. So let's go into our gatherer AI, and down here, when we finally arrive at the storage position, before we reset our amount, let's go into game resources and add the gold amount based on the amount that we are carrying. Then we reset it, go back to idle, and so on. Now here, just for testing, let's do a debug.log of the game resources dot get the gold amount. So now when he reaches the storage area, he should increase our game gold amount. So first it should display one, then on the second time it should display two. Let's see. So there he is, mines that. When he gets there, you should see in the console, yep, one gold amount. He goes, mines the second one, and now, boom, there you go, it says two. All right, so we now have a global counter keeping track of our resources. So let's make a very simple UI to display the resources so we don't have to look in the console. Let's go into our UI canvas. In here, let's make a new game object and name it Window Game Resources. Let's expand it. Inside, let's make a text object and we're going to name it gold amount, add the text component, all right we have our window set up now let's make this script make a new c -sharp script and let's name it window game resources inside let's make a function to update the text so private void update resource text object and here let's go into the transform dot find the gold amount which is the text object get the text component and set the text to gold and then go into game resources dot get the goal amount. Now on our private void awake, let's go into game resources and subscribe to the on gold amount change event. And when it does change, let's update our text. All right, so we have a function to update our text object based on the game resources .get gold amount, and when it changes, the game resources fires this event, which again updates the text object. So let's test, and we should be able to see it displayed in our UI. Add the component, and let's try. Okay, it says gold zero, he goes in, he drops it, and boom, there you go, gold one, 
He grabs another one, goes there, and goal two. Okay, great. So there you have it. We created a static class to handle our game resources and made our AI interface with it. In the next video, we're going to create a resource node object to handle resource node depletion. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.